Well, hello, hello. And today in this episode, I'm going to be talking about e-commerce business. Um, so if you have come across the first time here uh, on my channel, thank you so much. Uh, and we haven't met before, by the way, my name is Liz Surya. I'm a tax accountant, but mostly I'm a business advisor. And I have really specialized in the last, I would say more than 10 years in two niches, which is actually, yes, e-commerce, you guessed that right. And also real estate. Those are my two favorite niches where I have actually not only done the talk, but I've done the walk. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and dive in into this episode because i think it's so important so many people ask me constantly uh you know whether or not you know how can they get started and you know i i understand there's a lot of resources out there but sometimes we just want to find the right direction right we agree so let's go ahead and not waste any more time and now get started okay all right so a lot of times what I have been asked by many of my clients throughout so many years, I've been in e-commerce now exactly, I think since 2014. <laughs> so it feels like a long, long time. And I really also saw back then how much future and how much growth e-commerce was gonna uh, go. And I really believe that uh, right now, more than ever, this is one of the greatest uh, business models that you can get into, especially because is really cost effective in the sense where it doesn't require you to have like large amounts of money, right? Um, the traditional type of, um, and I wanna get into this because it's very important, uh, hopefully for you to understand that, you know, we get the traditional where we know we have typical local stores and of course, a lot of big shops and stores have shut down in the last couple of years. Um, but there's a difference, right? There's the brick and mortar business and then we have all these e-commerce business starting. Now, I still believe that, yes, believe it or not, physical stores are still gonna be around for a while, um, even though a lot is shutting down, I understand that, but they will because they still, remember older generations that we still like to touch, we still like to actually physically visit a store. So there are some benefits to that. Uh, but of course, e-commerce is going to continue to expand, expand nonstop. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. Uh, the e-commerce business that I really feel that based, again, in my experience and what I have seen through my clients, it's definitely Amazon, it's definitely eBay, and then a third is Shopify, right? So let's clear that. Shopify is nothing more than a platform that you pay a monthly fee, right? And you're able to put your products there for sale, right? Um, so you're more independent because you got less, you know, profits that you don't have to share, uh, you know, with a third party, right? So, and I think Shopify, by the way, it's very good strategy. If you already have established something like maybe an Amazon store or your store is an eBay seller, this is a third option that I think this should be there. Um, and the reason behind that is because remember, not always do you want to count on the traffic and, you know, paying such a high percentage of your profits because you need to be in the platform because of course the traffic, right? We all want the traffic and we know that, uh, you know, search engine optimization and doing marketing can be very costly. It really can, even if you do it through Google, or you do it through other types of, uh, you know, search engines, right? So it is a nice way to start. Um, and I know one of the things that Amazon definitely, it's a great, uh, you know, uh, perception to get there started. And the reason behind that, because it's very low cost, right? You only have that small monthly fee and then you can pay that percentage. But then remember also that Amazon every single year has been increasing their percentage. This is a true fact, okay? Um, I can tell you from clients that I have a few years ago, they were paying maybe an average of, you know, eight, 10%. Now they're paying like 12, 15%. You know, that's eating out of your margin, okay? And remember, you still have the cost of goods, right? You're still purchasing products, you're still paying for freight. So all those kind of things is a lot of money. So I think what really matters the most here is that um, you can realize that even though it's great, um, you need to be cautious with that because the more expense that you have, the less profit you're gonna make, right? That will make a lot of sense, right? So I think that, you know, to me, I feel like a lot of times with e-commerce, 
just be cautious in, in the sense how much are you really spending. And I know a lot of you sometimes you only look at the big pictures, but we have to look at the smaller numbers because remember, it's not the gross income that you're making. You really need to look about your net, right? Um, and most importantly, I think with Amazon, and, and I would tell anybody who's joining, especially from scratch, for some of you who are watching or listening to uh, my podcast, which yes, I do have, this is almost considered a web podcast, by the way. Um, I know that one of the things that I really enjoy is that I think you can start with such a few items and kind of test it, you know, a test drive. You never want to jump in and no matter how good the product can be and just blindly, you know, upfront, put so much money into it because, you know, it's, it just, it might not work. Remember, sometimes we want to test the waters and we want to know the products, right? One of the very first things that I would tell you is a tip uh, for any type of, you know, product that you want to sell online is, Really, you need to do a little bit of research. And not only a little bit of research, but more validation. And what I mean by that is one of the best ways that you can do, it's really through social media. You know, you can do Facebook, you can do Instagram, TikTok, right? And you can go through all these different, even Twitter is still very good. Yes, it is. Uh, and you can go through these platforms and look at what people are asking things that are there you know uh, want to search for and that's a very good idea to know what kind of product i want to sell now this is my tip and my tip is really where i'm speaking from experience because by the way yes um like i said i told you earlier that i do the talk and walk i was also an amazon private seller uh, or as they call it a white label um because i did have my own brand um, working on it and many times I have the main box uh, as I was selling my products and, um, and that's really difficult to get to um, and yes I was able to accomplish and it was an experience for me because I wanted to be able to know what it was for my clients to go through that and I think that anyone getting started especially from now on it's, it's good for you to test your products and what I mean by that for example let's say that you would say, well, I'm interested in selling a product. What kind of product? Well, first of all, the first thing I would tell you is make sure it's not heavy, right? Because the heavier the product is, the more costly it's going to be with the freight, okay? Now, we know most of us, we're ordering from big, you know, um, you know um, product companies and manufacturers like Alibaba, right? But the problem with that is that you want to keep your freight as least as possible, so if you buy a smaller item, right, then what's going to happen? You won't have to pay in that excessive freight, okay? Not to mention the cost of fees, right? As we bring them to the, to, at least I'm here in the United States, as you bring them to the U.S., you know, soil, you have all these custom fees that a lot of times, by the way, are not included in the freight. So watch out with that. Make sure you always ask that when you place an order, especially overseas, okay? Now, second of all, I would say, like I said, keep away from weights, keep away from anything that's oversized, that's right. Anything that is really big or is heavy or is thoroughly fragile. That's right. These are things that you want to be cautious about because I think once you have acquired certain experience, then that's fine. You might want to get into those type of you know products to sell. But I would say anyone who's starting now, and I highly recommend it really, and again, I speak from my own experience and from my clients who I've been you know, helping for, for many, many years, like since, since 2014, it's not worth it. Now, if you do have sufficient capital and you have even separate warehouses that you've been renting storage, then that's a different story. But for anybody who's saying, hey, I just want to get a little side business on the side list and you know what, I don't want to worry about this kind of you know uh, responsibilities. I'm telling you right now, keep away from those three items. Weight, make sure it's the least weight possible, okay? Make sure it's not a large item. And third, it's not fragile. All right. And also be very cautious, yes, with electronics and anything has to be related to batteries. All these Amazon and eBay has become very, very harsh with people that actually carry those kind of products. So again, going back to Amazon, I really think it's still a phenomenal way to get started online. Just do your research, do your validation, and make sure 
that you know there's a demand for that product, right? So one of the best things you can do, I'm sure you're probably a buyer yourself. I know I am. I have bought an eBay. I have bought, an, you know, an Amazon for more than 10 years, actually. And, and I believe that, you know what, we just need to do a homework. You know, you never want to go blindfolded to any type of business. I don't care how great it is until you do your own research. See what's your competition, right? Because you need to make sure that your margins are going to be profitable because if they're not, then what's the purpose of getting into business, okay? So, and I don't want you to waste your money, especially if you have a small savings and you put it into this, or maybe perhaps you're using your credit cards, that's even worse, especially if you don't have zero interest on them. <laughs> but other than that, I really believe there's so much potential for anyone. So even if you work in a full-time job, maybe part-time, who cares? Just do this on the side. Give them time for the business to grow remember nothing happens overnight not even the e-commerce okay it doesn't except if you can you have sufficient capital then maybe you can actually purchase an amazon store or maybe purchase an ebay store that's different they already have the traffic they already have the customer but if you start it from zero it's going to take some time and i want you to stay as positive as you're going through the process okay so this article that i'm actually sharing um i will be actually putting the, uh, the link right below in the description box and it's coming from what's called the the website is a better lemonade stand a better lemonade stand and that is uh, forward slash what is e-commerce okay um so later on you can you know uh hopefully uh take some minutes and just you know read the article i think it's a great article um that's why i'm sharing it um but most most important for me what i wanted to go through it's some of the differences because i think that a lot of times i see people getting too motivated but then they get really discouraged right away and when i tell you start slowly um and with you know a few items and don't overdo it and like i said keep away from those three dangerous things that i told you okay now jumping in i really think that one of the best things that you can do and this one i'm going down through this article and i really enjoy it because it says here first of all e-commerce branding guide so if you want to download that that's available here um it also recommends how you can create um beautiful website designs through some of the other you know services uh how to come up with a business name that's very good and i'm going to discuss that really briefly here i'm not an attorney so i have to say disclaimer um but definitely i think one of the most important for you to get started is just doing a dba yeah doing business as whatever it is you know so instead of using just your name it's nice to have a little dba now a lot of amazon stores and ebay i know they require your legal name um but when it comes to doing your taxes and doing your schedule c which is being an independent contractor for a lot of people knowing like that but it's really being so proprietorship um hopefully i'm not getting you all confused here, but I'm trying to make it as basic and as simple as possible. When you start a business, you will have responsibilities to pay taxes. I mean, it's just, you know, the pros and the cons of being a business, not all just making a profit, right? So a portion of that money is gonna to go to internal revenue services that is called your income tax or your federal taxes, right? Now, it's important that you understand that because you wanna keep track of all those, you know, not only income, but especially the expenses, right? That's how, that's gonna reduce the money that you're making. And then yes, there's plenty of deductions that you probably have heard, you know, that you can do, including your home office, including even if you're storing things in, in your garage or maybe in, in, in a closet, whatever it is, this is space that you can use to deduct. The most important thing is keeping a little bit of record keeping, okay? So I've been asked many times as an accountant, when is, is it a good time to really contract someone like you, you know, a good bookkeeper perhaps? or maybe an accountant, you know, to this. And usually, you know, I call it my rule of thumb is to really, once you reach at least $20,000 in average per month, really. So if you're less than that, yeah, chances are you're probably doing yourself, you know, the bookkeeping, or perhaps you might have someone else doing it. Whatever it is, one of the things I would say is be very cautious in how those record transactions are getting into, especially if you're using QuickBooks, um, for an example, I'm a QuickBooks uh, provisor, so I've done a lot of troubleshooting support 
when I get a lot of clients that they come from another previous bookkeeper or from a business owner, a new one, who is not very knowledgeable about accounting 101, because remember, QuickBooks is a great software, but behind that, it is accounting. Um, so, and I know there's plenty of free information out there that you can look at tutorials, but you never always want to get to seek the help of another, you know, accountant that can help you and oversee your operations to make sure before you file the taxes, because I've seen people file taxes and overpaying taxes. And then it just blows my mind that you do this because you work so hard, even in online to store your business and then giving up your money all to, to taxes. It makes no sense, right? So again, always, once you reach that threshold, right, of $20,000 per month, and I'll tell you a reason why, because a lot of things can be handled, especially if you're selling a product that is not in small quantity. In, in other words, you could be selling a product that you might be selling for two or $300 an item, right? And if you're doing that, then great. That means that you have less products probably to sell because you're making enough even with, you know, that type of product that you're selling. So the most important thing is be cautious, be careful. Um, like I said, record keeping, as we call it, bookkeeping, uh, making sure that things are being recorded correctly into QuickBooks, which is obviously one of the best programs I still consider out there for really anyone to, to understand. It's very user-friendly. Uh, you can get a bunch of tutorials, right, and learn it yourself. But remember, there is a lot of things that no tutorial, nothing's going to teach you right away. And that's where I see so many mistakes when they come to me or they come to another accountant and we review, you know, their, their books and their P&L and their balance sheet. We know right away there's something wrong. Uh, it might not be wrong to you in your eyes, but it's wrong to our eyes because we're so used to doing this over. So my thing is just be cautious. Never file return just because you think you can do true or tax. You always want to have somebody who has the expertise to really review your, you know, financial reports. So that would be one of my biggest advice. Once you start making, you know, sufficient money, it's worth the vent. Sometimes we want to cut corners and not pay some professional, but by not paying, you could end up paying more. So let me repeat that. By not paying a professional to have a review of your books or have some adjustments that are necessary, or having a profession filing your tax return versus using TurboTax, it can create a view over paying in taxes. Or sometimes, if that's the case, hopefully you get a refund back if you overpay. But what happens, which is even worse, and this is what really, you know, it really bothers me when I see this, is small sellers getting hit with a huge tax bill because they underpay. That's even worse. Because if you overpay, hopefully you get some refund or you can apply that credit to something future taxes. But if you underpay, then a lot of times you can get penalties and you can get interest and things like that. Now, hey there, real quick. Um, I decided to split this um, series of e-commerce business because it was very lengthy uh, and it was probably a little more than 35 minutes uh, the entire um, episode. So I think it will make a lot more sense because on the next part, um, you're I'm really going more in depth about the sales tax and the nexus. And um, just thought that it was going to be too much information uh, for any audience to really digest. So um, that's why I'm doing, you know, this uh, split. I think it just made more sense in that case. And like I said, after this month's over, definitely I'm going to promise you I will be doing the uh, freaking, uh, you know, questions and answers. Um, and like I said, these are questions that I have been asked so many times um, by, you know, all my clients. So I hope that maybe helps you even further um, before you actually jump in and do something. So 